We're going to open the press conference with an uh, opening statement from the head coach. Coach, whenever you're ready. Um, mum, 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 mum. That's a tradition there, right? Uh, I, uh, I just want to say how proud I am of our team and the season they had. Uh, that's the most important thing with, uh, with our opportunity to, to come here today and play. Uh, what we wanted to do is show how we play and how we can com compete at St. Francis and not worry about the end result or what would happen. And uh, I think our team did that today. And I'm really, really incredibly proud of how hard they played and how hard they compete um, until the end of the game. Uh, so that was our goal, to come out, play St. Francis basketball uh, for as long as possible and compete as hard as we could every possession um, until the final buzzer. And then whatever happens, happens. So, uh, you know, a lot of people, the, 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 the final score, uh, the style of play, the way we play, it's unconventional, obviously. Um, but that's what we do, how we play. And uh, the margin of victory, the margin of loss, whatever the final score is, doesn't matter too much. It doesn't matter as much, I think, is how you play. And um, there was only one chance that we would have had to come close in this game, and that was going to be to shoot a million threes, and hopefully they go in. Uh, so we shot a million threes, and we didn't make them. Um, we missed them in the fourth quarter. Uh, but we competed, and, and I'm, proud of our, uh, I'm proud of our team. OK, at this time, we're going to have questions only for the student athletes. We have seniors Maya Wynn and uh, Sydney Smith with us. We have the microphone. Uh, questions for the student athletes. Right here in the front. For both of you, was it what you expected uh, when you went out there? Was it were they faster than you than you saw on film? And and um, you know what did you say to yourselves at the halftime and um, to come back out in the, in, in the third quarter and compete? Mm -hmm. Here you go. Um, these girls are extremely talented, and they're exactly what we expected. They're very long and athletic. And we just made sure at the half that we just kept playing our style and made sure we had fun because at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Sydney, do you want to answer as well? Uh, I, would, I would agree. I think uh, our role as seniors, uh, especially my role, my statistical role has changed a bit, but just my leadership role and being able to get the team to kind of calm down and realize that these are world-class athletes, but they're, they're human beings. And we got a 40-minute game to play. Regardless, um, and I think we all went out and played with, had a lot of fun and played without fear. Um, so I think it was what we expected, and we also were able to calm down once we, once we got on the floor and played. Again, right here. Pat Eaton, Rob from the AP again. Can you two just reflect on the season and, you know, notwithstanding this game, what it meant to you to get to this point and uh, how you guys are going to look back on the year? Um, this year was extremely important to me um, in my four years. This is probably the best opportunity we had to win a championship in our conference. And I feel like I had to sacrifice a lot and be extremely selfless in order to get here today. And it just means everything. And I will never forget it. Um. Again, I mean, same thing. It's a it's a poetic finish to to any season, we, not this game withstanding, but even this game. I mean, it's a it's a experience that most people never get. So regardless, it's it's a great way to finish any career. I think. In the back here. John Henry Smith, NBC Connecticut. What does it say? As two people who play basketball and have seen a variety of type athletes compete, you talk about them being world class athletes. But the way the way that UConn competed uh, from the first 
quarter till the fourth. What 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 impressed you? What didn't impress you? What did you see? Well, um, one thing I know I even heard teammates talking about on the bench. One thing that impressed me was their cohesiveness and their communication on the floor. And I'm hoping that's something that they will take into their next seasons and wherever else. I think that's something we emphasize a lot, but you've never really seen it put into action the way that they did today. I mean, sometimes they were even trapping and like you knew the trap was coming because they were calling it out. Like uh, they were very uh, composed. And I think I hope that's something that my teammates take into their future seasons. In the back again. <clears throat> Alex Colley, WTAJ in Altoona. Uh, what's your message to some of the players that will be coming back next year? What do you want them to learn from this season? For next year, it's important for the younger players to step up and really show their leadership. They're going to have a lot of young um, teammates coming in and the ones that are already there are still young as well so showing and leading by example is very important and just to work hard they can't stop working hard because they should want to be in this position again next year and it's, it's not easy to get here I think uh, Maya Lex and I can appreciate it more um, because this is our first time in our entire career but they might, you know, come in their freshman year, sophomore year, and this is just, you know, the way it goes. But it's really not. And I want them to, re to remember that. Anything else for the student athletes? Okay. You can go back to the locker room. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. At this time, we'll take questions for the head coach, and we're going to start right up here in the front. <clears throat> coach. What what makes it so difficult to play defense against them? I mean, it, it, is it just a shock value or something the first time you, you play them on a big stage like this? I, it, it's hard to play defense because they're the best players in the world and do what they do the best, and they make shots. So, um, you know, for, for somebody like us coming in, we're – little disadvantaged in, in height and athletic ability and all of those types of things. So, um, I mean, they're just, they're just better. And so when we come into a game like this, I mean, we did have, you know, something that we did want to try and do, um, you know, not, not guard, uh, not guard two of their players and, and, uh, try and limit their three point shots and take those away. You have to take you know, we're playing, you know, whatever, Whatever the last you know, 220 or 300 or 500 teams that have done to play against them before hasn't worked too good. Um, you know, the teams that beat them are the are the Notre Dame's and Baylor's of the world. So, um, you know, for somebody like us coming in, we might as well try something different. It's probably I don't know. It's probably been 20, 25 years since somebody uh, since they were an underdog in a game or. or Playing. So we came in with, uh, you know, we'll try something different and uh, give it our best shot. But it doesn't make, uh, I didn't think it made too much sense for us to come in and, tr and uh, you know, try and do something that, that hasn't worked for any other team in America. Right down here, Coach. Joe, Mike Anthony from the Hartford Current. Yeah. People see a halftime score like that and the, the online conversation becomes, this is really bad for women's basketball. Uh, would you sh share your thoughts on what maybe people from the outside should should see should um, kind of view this game as it, it, oh. is it maybe good in a way in that they set the bar so high for what teams can do? Oh well, thanks for the question because I mean, it allows me to answer it some. Um, and it's not. I don't think it's bad for women's basketball at all. Um, you know, this is one game. It's a first round game, and they scored a lot of points, um, but. We competed. I mean, everybody knows there's a difference between, uh, you know, the best team in America and and the and the and the, the schools in the smaller levels of Division One. Um, but we came into the game. We're not playing. We didn't play scared. We did the best we could, uh, and we had uh, we had a shot. I think it's you know the things that are. Uh, the people that want to say it's bad for women's basketball are ones that aren't you know, don't care about women's basketball much anyway. I mean, the the score doesn't matter. Like UConn's really, really good, and they play really good basketball. 
we tried something different today that, that somebody hasn't done, and, and that's fine. But it gives you an opportunity to see uh, a difference, and they'll go on, they'll play the rest of the tournament, and you know they can go back and you know watch some uh, you know watch watch low scoring games and stuff. I, I, I don't think it's bad at all. It's something different, and you know with, this is the result today. Um, when we, you know, some other time we may play them and we may make more of those shots and it could be a different result. But um, I think, you know, if somebody actually watched the game and watched how hard our kids played uh, and how long they played, then I think they would have more respect for that. And what, what people, you know, what, if there's online stuff talking about it, um, you know, most of those people aren't, aren't, you know, don't care about women's basketball anyway. So, coach in the back there, uh, Joe Jeff Jacobs from Hearst Connecticut Media. Um, I was wondering, did you get to watch the uh, UMBC game last night? Did you bring it up to your players? And I think, it, kind of picking back on the question Mike asked, you know, people nationally will look at something like that, maybe not understand the differences between, you know, the, the two games. I just wanted your kind of thoughts on that. Uh, I watched I watched the UMBC game, so that's a great game. I didn't bring it up to our players. Um, you know, it's it's incredible what they did, and and it it was it's awesome watching the big upset. And I and I think uh, to some extent everybody wants to see that, um, or basketball fans want to see that. Um, they, uh, but I I didn't really I didn't bring it up to our team uh, because. It's not like we need it any different message than what we had coming in anyway. Um, you know, you know that anything's possible in a in a sporting event. Um, you know, in the back of my back of our all of our minds, you know, we come into a situation like today, and we, uh, you know, we hope for the best. There's a, there's a piece of it in the back of your mind that you think maybe that maybe this is a day that you know instead of ten for fifty seven you go you know forty for fifty seven and have a sh have a shot, um, but that was going to be our only shot today. Uh, as you know, as for commentary outside of uh, the people that were here and saw it today, um, it's. You know, I hope it doesn't reflect on our on our players, um, or or you know, because you look at yeah, they had whatever they had at halftime. Um, they made all their shots, and it can reflect it, it can reflect more on a, a a crazy coach trying something different. Like our kids were were competitors and they played hard, and we we didn't make shots. So. Uh, you know, it's it's not bad for women's basketball. They'll go play whatever they've played. You know, however many they win forty games a year, in in different styles, in different ways. Um, you know, they've beaten a lot better teams than us by fifty and sixty. Um, we gave it a shot. We tried something different. We gave it our best shot, and uh, we at least came into this game. You know, we we weren't playing keep away. We weren't hiding from them. We were going to come in and try something and compete, and, and however slim the chance was, uh, you know, to win something. Um, and and we all, everybody knows it was really slim coming into it, but we gave it a shot. And, you know, we, we, we did the best we could, were overmatched, and, and I'm proud of the way that we played today. There's 15 minutes left on the open locker room. I have time for one more question in the front. Pat Eaton, Rob from the Associated Press. Happy birthday, Coach. Thank you. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more about what the plan was? Who were you trying to, to leave open? And obviously throw up a lot of threes was the, was the idea. But what, what else was the plan? Yeah, um, the, ones that don't, the ones that don't shoot the three. Um, so Williams, like, I mean, what we want to do is uh, Williams and Stevens not guard them. Let them stand at the free throw line and shoot 15 footers, 17 footers, let them shoot free throws. And I would have been happy if they shot, you know, 60 shots from there instead of layups. Um, it, it's hard to adjust from what you've 
how you've uh, defended, you know, an entire year to trying to do something a little bit different. But we wanted to just keep a big back, uh, kind of under the rim, um, you know, try and contest a layup or two. Hope get them to you know, let them shoot 15 footers, and hopefully a couple of those missed. Um, and really just trade threes for twos. Like there's nothing. We have a very difficult time. You know, like I said, nobody else in the world stopped him for 20 years. So we were going to try and outscore him um, and try something different. So that was the one piece of it. Take away the three-pointers, um, you know, let them make twos, try and make them as difficult as we could. And we didn't do a great job of that most of the time. Um, and then get as many three-point shots up, get good looks. I, think the, I don't think we took many bad ones. I thought we got pretty – pretty decent shots and didn't make them, um, especially in the fourth quarter. We usually shoot better than 0 for 15. Um, and the other thing I think that's really impressive with the way we played today was uh, having 18 turnovers. Because when you go back and, and take this, obviously this wasn't a, a, possession, a, a traditional game. So in a normal 68 to 72 possession game when teams don't want to have 16 turnovers, for us to have 18 turnovers in, you know, whatever today's what I haven't done the number on it yet, but I'm going to guess that we were, uh, I mean, we were up around 90 possessions. So to only turn the ball over 18 times, that says something for our kids too, especially when four or five of them were in the first couple minutes of the game when there's a, a you know, when you're playing against a, a type of player that you've never seen before. So, um, you know, I, that's, uh, that's not bad. That's not a bad effort for, for us coming in. And it's something to build on. It's the first, uh, first NCAA tournament appearance for us. Um, we had a really, really good season. Um, and the returners can learn a lot. Uh, and then we'll come back and you know, try and get better next year and be better next year and you know, hopefully see you guys again. OK, thank you very much, Coach.